lookout. Finals footy is back. G'day, I'm James Clements. Not to be confused with perhaps Simon Beaumont. You might have thought that that was him. No, this is the AFL Today Show brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. Exciting times. We are here to make footy fun. That's what we do on the AFL Today Show. And I'm, of course, joined by a couple of local dinguses. You, I don't know. I guess the collective noun is dingai. We have full-blown footy nuffs. Maybe AFL experts. Alex Donnelly over there. Maybe is a strong word. Definitely yeah. not, I'd go with. Uh, yeah, maybe he's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in between us is the little fella, the stats boy. What's going oh, on, stats man? I thought we were over with the little fella, but I am here. Yeah, I'm very excited for the footy finals. Let's go. He sits on four pillows. Uh, yeah. Two. <laughs> Either way, this is the awesome, awesome setup Thursday day show. We usually do a Thursday team show yeah, on Thursday. Yeah. But instead, with this bye week before the final start, this is... The opportune time where we've got our AFL Today Show Awards coming on Sunday show. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the 10 teams that missed out on the finals. The expectations we had for these teams, where they ended up, but more importantly, how we bloody fix them? <laughs> what are we going to do? We're going to fix them. We, we know how to fix these teams. We are the Brains Trust. <laughs> do not take any word we say, seriously. So, with that in mind... Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're all around the socials for the AFL Today Show because finals footy is back. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? It's September. Almost. Let's go. Yeah, almost. 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 I mean, Pretty much. Let's just we're going to get September. through the weekend. Yeah. Let's then it's say September. September. Yeah. The greatest time of year. Before we get into fixing these 10 teams, gentlemen, <laughs> let's do some Thursday news. Hey, Pendles is back. Yeah, no surprise. He's still a freak. Did you know he used season. to play basketball? Yeah. Did he? No one's actually brought that up in over 400 games <laughs> or 20 seasons. But Pendle's actually, you know that he was like on the same sort of like, you know, teams growing up as Paddy Mills. That's, that's incredible. That's unbelievable. I've never anyway, heard that one. Uh, 20th season for Pendle's. That's wild. He's just been so consistent throughout. Well deserved. Like, I just signed him for five more years. He's just, he's just a freak. It's remarkable that he doesn't suck. No. Like, he's older than like, I don't know, you and like Leo put together. And... <laughs> This is insane. Oh, yeah. I love it. Good on it. So they've also announced Steel Side Bottom, Will Hoskin Elliott, and Jeremy Howe have all signed on today Wait, as well. Wait, just today as well? They they did five signings in five hours, so this is like they're going for like their last dance or some bullcrap. Well played. Well I like played. that. They've actually just done their one-on-ones and just like shuffled <laughs> them in at half-hour meetings for each. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Got the contracts out. Just sign there. Go on. Do yeah, it. just do it. Off we go. Uh, there is also some weird chaos going on with like the top of the Collingwood sort of executive tree where they're like football boss is gone. Mm. Uh, their president's like, yeah, probably not going to go around again and off they go. So yeah. I don't know. It seems like the times are changing there in Collingwood, but they're going to have one more crack at it probably next year with like uh, the old crew. Yep. And uh, we'll see what happens after that. Yeah. Um, yeah there is an edge of a cliff coming at some point, but. Dacos can pretty good. Uh, help him. Both Dacos yeah. can help. Having, having, a, having a couple Both. of Dacos yeah. in your back pocket yeah. helps that transition period yeah. a bit, I reckon. But either way, Brent Daniels, six years. Four. Six years! It's a lot of years. It's a lot of years for Brent Daniels. 2031. Well, Australian squad, so Brent Daniels. So he's not just uh, normal Brent Daniels anymore. I like that it's 2031, and you're like, oh, I still reckon, like, oh, I'm still looking forward to 2010. <laughs> like, yeah. In the back of my brain, I'm like, LeBron James. So this is how I like LeBron James did the uh, the decision in 2010. Yes, and 2010, so yeah. the lead up to that season, that off season, there was lots of NBA teams clearing cap space. Including For LeBron. Like the Knicks and stuff like that. They'll kick the tires on getting LeBron. And so he has the decision. He goes to Miami. Yep. And so my brain is still like, I can't believe like teams are like, you know, clearing cap space for 2010. It's <laughs> so far away. It's so far in the past now that we're looking at the 2030s with yeah. AFL contracts. There's a few yes. AFL players 2032, I think, as well. So that's wild. Yeah. Gross. Uh, this is one of those AFL pundit vibes that I 100% subscribe to. I think six-year extensions are too many. Yes. Way too many. You don't know what they're going to do in a couple of years, let alone six years. I mean, the current explosion that is the Melbourne Football Club mm. with players having signed seven-year deals. Yeah, and now they and don't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Should we go to Petrarca? Let's go to Petrarca. Yeah. So the Petrarca news uh, that we sort of talked about on yesterday's Midweek Madness show, yep. which was like a lot of this has sort of been this, you know, rampant speculation of like has he requested a trade, blah, blah, blah. It does sort of come out now that he's like basically told his teammates, he's like, hey, boys, I'm out. I don't like this He's at all. been very honest and open with all this, which a lot of it's AFL refreshing. players wouldn't. Yeah, it is, it is refreshing. Also, the fans being weird about blaming his wife 
or fiance. So really I, weird. I did hit on this in yesterday's okay, show. Yeah. So if I got injured at work, <laughs> yeah, and, I, I listen to this. Right? Yes. If I got injured at good. work and work like Nah, Jim, you're fine, and I'm like, oh, I nearly died. And then <laughs> at that night, if like the boss was just like, ah, oh, like you know, Jim's been injured. We're gonna have to call the missus, call old mate, get on the dog and bone. Old yeah, mate will be like, yeah, yeah, he's Jim fine. Jim might not make it through the night. Yeah, and if like no one from work had sort of been in touch around after that, I'd probably have some problems. You'd be with annoyed, work. and yeah, you just so say it. Yeah. This goes into the interview that their president did this morning, Kate Roffey, and it's like, have you talked to Christian Petrarca's family about all this? No, nah. no. Nah. Well, uh, she said yeah. not lately. So this is one of those things. Is like, have we discussed it in the past? <clears throat> probably, but as all this has popped off. I feel like the first thing you should be doing is getting on the yeah. old dog and bone going, how do we fix this? What are we doing here, Christian, and your partner and family extension? Like, like just fix it. Yeah. Like, this is your job as a president to go, oh, I need to, like, be on top of absolutely every aspect of this. Because if you think about, like, the more proactive presidents in the past of Eddie. AFL, uh, you think about Eddie Maguire, you think about just anybody, right? Just anyone who's, Eddie like, Bradshaw, got their head on yeah. a swivel. Brendan Gale. Like, Brendan just Gale, somebody yeah. just go, right, we need to fix this right away. Smooth this over, get it all sorted out. What are they doing? Are they being passive and just sort of going, ah, oh, it'll be fine. And maybe don't go That's on. That's not my job. I don't know. Yeah, don't get interviewed if you don't know the full details or you know the questions they're going to ask and you can't answer all of them. I, that's just, that was pretty stupid by... Uh, so, yeah, um, it's like uh, during the interview, we're in constant dialogue with the players. I regularly talk to the leadership group, but at the same time, I haven't spoken to Christian or his parents and I don't know what his grievances are. What are we doing? That is insanity. Yeah, it's no good. It's no that good. is gross, just misapplication of, of your job. Uh, do not like. Someone's got receipts as well. In September 2021, I really <laughs> take go. the view if something is not going right in the team and something is not going right with the culture of the club, then it is my fault as a president. I guess this might be your fault then. Yeah. Sorry, Kate. Oof. I think you might need to look for a new job. Tough one. Either way, so the Petrarca stuff has come to a bit more <clears> of a head. There was another big article that came out yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Every day is going to be Basically, yeah, you're getting more and more and more. Adam There's, Cooney is so excited for his mega trade right now. Oh, yeah. He, used to, he always <laughs> yeah. has a mega trade, yeah. There is a vibe, though. That's, I think you've got weird-looking old big head himself, Sam McClure, standing in front of boards going, here are four things that are wrong. <laughs> 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 this guy doesn't know how to speak. It's great. And he's like, ah, oh, they didn't handle Clayton Oliver good. And then it's like... He wants to expand his brand, and that really set off fans. Well, oh, you, what do you mean your brand? It's not bigger no, that's a modern than like thing, the yeah. club. And you're like, well, he's you're thinking post retirement. If you're think if you're playing for a team that isn't in the spotlight, and this is another thing, he wants to play in bigger in front of bigger crowds, which is again massive. Fair enough. If you think about your off field earning potential, if you're on a team that's playing in front of nobody and has a shall we say, passive supporter base, yep. uh, even though they won a flag in 2021, you've already sort of brought them to the mountaintop. I'm Fine with this now. Like yeah, five years left them in your contract, fly, yeah. I get it. But this is well within your rights to then ask for a trade. So off you go. There you go. Anyway, build your brand. This is post post footy career sort yeah. of vibes. It's very modern like, thing, but it's good. It's a good thing for the players. Smart. Give him a cooking show. What are we doing? Oh, ready, steady, cook with Christian Petrarca. Christian I was Petrarca. About to say Huey. Let's go. The <laughs> Huey's cooking. The AFL Today Show and the Sports Today Show. Well, network. the Sports Today Network will give you a cooking show. Mates, rates, but we will give you a cooking show. Twenty bucks. It'd be fine. Just come on. <laughs> jump on. We've got your back. We'll cover you. And if you do get hit by a car, we will probably call you the next day and see. Oh, we'll, we'll probably come to Australia. You right, man? We'll yeah. sit. We'll sit. Stats boy by your bed. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to do that. That's great. He happy. might not want the job now. <laughs> All right. Other news, especially concerning Melbourne, Cosby Pickett. Uh, this came out again today. This morning, yeah. Uh, yeah last he's night. feeling last night, yeah. sick. Uh, homesick or everyone else is leaving I wouldn't yeah. mind going as well oh yeah. I'm out boys <laughs> so West Coast is just like you little rip out. he's Adelaide isn't he oh that's no. it he said he's homesick but he's not w for <laughs> he's, he was born he was in w. w I don't know if he, where he grew up though yeah okay yeah. it's like if I was homesick for like you know but not Ballarat <laughs> <laughs> it's like New York you're oh, homesick I'm, for New York I'm yeah. for that yeah yeah uh, Outside of this as well, Tex Walker re-signed, speaking yep. of Adelaide, uh, sure. re-signed for next week. Oh, next week, next year. <laughs> just, just next off, week. Just, just yeah, one yeah. week. <laughs> just go and kick some snags. Hey, guys, want to see me kick some snags? Snags, 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 yeah. snags. snags. Uh, one more year for Tex. I'm fine with that. I'm not. Uh, no. I'll say, yeah, one more year. He nope. had some injuries, but yeah. Would have gone, hey, Melbourne. Hi, Melbourne. I do love the idea mm. that they're like, oh, he could make 300 games. He's like 278. There's no way he's playing 22 <laughs> no, games. I agree. No, I Unless they make I, I would have, a part of the Alex Neal Bullen deal, I would have been like, yeah, that and something else. Yep, here's Tex. Give us a fourth rounder. 
There's not four rounds. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Tex, look, I still also feel like you can just clear that out and go Thriller and Fog, off you go. Yeah, yeah that's, line that's my point. Yep. But just keep Tex around as a goal-kicking coach. He's a, he he'd be a good, games, uh, veteran, good veteran, Dave. Uh, he had four touches on the weekend. Ah. And then the final little bit of news is that Kevin Sheedy oh, this is the best. Uh, got Oasis back together. <laughs> That's the that's it. That's the news. That that is the news. Yeah, he was in a uh, Manchester derby EPL box. I think this is this is years ago, but it's come out since ah. uh, Oasis are coming back together. This is years ago in a Nike box. He met Liam Gallagher, gave him some advice about reconnecting with his family and his brother. And, and Liam Gallagher said, "I've got some therapists, and you that is the best advice I've ever received." I don't know that. I reckon the story has snowballed a bit. It's been on about three different podcasts and and uh, so made, it, I, made up a bit. But I thought yeah. it was Nigel McGuinness wrestling for the first time in 15 years at Wembley on Saturday that did it. Oh, there you go. I don't know any of those things. What yeah. any of those things mean? Well, you know what Wembley is. <laughs> no, I, <don't> know Wembley. <laughs> I just love this idea of like, Sheets. Kevin, like Sheets, Liam yeah. Gallagher yeah. nodding along going, you're right, kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll go talk to our kid. It'll be right. <laughs> Off he goes. I love is he that. Scottish now? Yeah, he's Scottish now. Yeah, it's like he's Liam uh, Gallagher. Is he? He's a man. So, he? man I love you. Ah, my mum loves you. Yeah, that, that's better. Now, st- now you're sounding like Tim from Sales. <laughs> so, uh, I love that Sheed's got Oasis back together. Yeah. Does he get like a Sheed's know, got- free, free couple of tickets that he can Maybe. He said he didn't like their music. He even said that to him. So Sheed's, when they walked in the box. Who doesn't like Oasis that's what I, I music? Don't know. Like Sheed's- that is, especially when you're that old and that white. <laughs> Sheed's, Sheed's, just was like- told, <laughs> Sheed's was told not to uh, say bag their music and not to bring up his brother. And the, the first two <laughs> things he brought up were those two <laughs> things. Like, he's like, all right. <laughs> I hate your music. Yeah. And why aren't you brother. talking to your brother? And his first thing was, how's your brother? So that's a very funny story. <laughs> that's that's an Australian thing. I like that he's an, he's not an Oasis fan, but he probably loves Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, just really, I really like Noel's solo stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there you go. That's all the news you need right now. Let us take a look. We don't want to say the word losers. Oh, they are. But, I mean, your team is definitely. Oh, I know. I North, mean, North of these are the 10 teams that did not make the 2024 AFL finals. So, so the, 10 te- the 10 teams that failed in their duty to their fans. Exactly. The Pretty 10 much. teams that missed out on the finals this year. What are the things they need to do to fix themselves for next year, to be on the right path? To improve on 2024, mm-hmm. we are the right people to, to judge this. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. As, completely as said, impartial. Brains trust, <laughs> and uh, we are not coloured by any sorts of bias or anything. No, so. way. no uh, way. But what we will do, we'll go through each of these ten teams, right? The ten teams that missed the finals outside the eight, so nine through eighteen, and we'll also look at that over under that we had at the start oh. of this season. Oh, there's some, there's some great results here. Some of these are shocking. That's the fun of it. That's the fun of it. Let's start. Should we start at the bottom or the top? Nah, top. Top down. Top down? Yeah, I reckon. We'll fix Collingwood first? Yep. Yep. Let's fix Collingwood. Right. Last year's premiers. 2023 champions. Darcy Moore up there holding up the cup. Dad, feeling great. And then it all burns down to the (laughs) green. The hangover was real in the one I had after the Menzingers. Jeez, (laughs) that was a rough one. The over-under prior to this season was 50. 15 and a half wins. Well, that's they high. won 12 games. They did not make the eight. Uh, I went over. We all went over. Alex went over. Oh, no. Stats boy went over. Oh, no. I mean, fair, fair. fair. They won the flag. We just sort of, we should have taken the premiership hangover into account. No, the well, thing is, I don't I think, think we considered all the injuries they would have throughout the year. This is it. There's and two, injuries, yeah. How do we fix the pies? There are two massive, massive, massive things for the pies <laughs> health and the defense. Yep. That's all it is. Yep. It's uh, all, and the forward. The forward line, I think their makeshift stuff worked last year, right? I mean, then you look at it this year, their defense wasn't good enough to let that makeshift forward no, line their defense, get them over the line. Even, but even Darcy Moore's form didn't help. Like the, Darcy Moore's confidence. form, Quainor yeah. dropped off. Quainor fell off no. a cliff. Yeah, and Nathan Murphy quite yeah. literally retired. He's an absolute and beast. So that's, yeah. These are the things. So the two things to fix Collingwood for next year, just get healthy and fire Braden Maynard and his war crimes <laughs> into the sun. It's a lot of Ma- Braden Maynard on this uh, next into show, the sun. so that's good. Nice. Uh, but really, find someone to replace Nathan Murphy. Build that defense back defense, up. They were yeah, the yeah. seventh worst this year. They were third best last year when they won. And they the were uh, ninth on offense this year. Yep. See, I think that's the thing, though. Like you can, They can win a flag with a middling sort of offense. They showed that last year, yeah. They did. Like They come from the clouds pies. You can only do that so long, as we saw. They did for a couple of years. Yeah. It's like it doesn't matter what lead – you have on them, they will absolutely come at you. You get goals from the day car as well. Like they're not obviously forwards, but you get you get the a few goal goals. The goalie was missing well. a bunch this year. Maya check was missing a bunch this year. 
Mm-hmm. Like, keep like obviously losing Nathan Murphy, like Cox in and out of the team. Not that, you know, Mason Cox makes a giant difference to that team, oh, but Darcy Cameron had a great so. year. Yep. You had, I think, a midfielding group that just wasn't quite as good. No. Like, Dacos, bit older as well. The Dakai, crisp, solid, fine. Dagoe was unreal. in and out. Even Chris was a bit older. Now, it was just sort of out. sucked, right? So, I don't know. Have you got any other ideas to fix Collingwood? Get more kids, but they don't have any picks. They gave away their first rounder for Lockie Schultz. Yep. Yeah, that's a good call. Maybe because they've only got a few good young guys. So after this sort of era, like few, Alex they have said, one. Well, Joe Richards. Nick Joe Richards. They got like, Joe Richards. I think he'll yeah. be all right. But he's also been offered. A there's deal not enough port. young stars. You're right. They need to just yeah, maybe have a look at that and maybe a few trades for some Hill, young guys. Hill slowly coming. Mm. Right. So get healthy though next year. Run it back one more time, and yep. I think you're laughing. Agreed. If you're healthy. Yep. So I think the Pies, out of all these teams here, I think it's Pies and Frio are like. This close They're anyway, close. and yep. it doesn't matter. Agreed. Speaking of which, Freo. The over-under was nine and a half of the Fremantle Dockers. Oh, what are we doing here? My beloved Fremantle Dockers, who came out and lost four straight games to finish off the season to catapult my beloved Blues into the finals. To be honest, the Blues have way more holes than I think Freo do. So, Freo, the over-under was nine and a half. There was not that much uh, energy or excitement about them going into this no. season. No. Uh, to the point where I had them going way under. I looked at my ladder predictor. I think I had them second last. I had them winning, Wait, really? I had them winning seven games. Yeah, I, I think I had about seven or eight games. Bottoming well. out. Yep. So uh, we stuffed that one up. Mm. Good start, boys. <laughs> yeah. So they went over the nine and a half. We all went under. Great job, everybody. Two things to fix Frio. My first one was quite simply just kick it to Tracy Moore. Well, yeah, the fact that they used him so well, especially second half of the year, was oh, just awesome. Keep him healthy. Keep him healthy as yep. well. Yeah. I think the combination of Tracy and Jai Miss is awesome. That's fun. I think their midfield is fantastic. Their defense was literally the top-ranked defense yeah. for most of this season. <sighs> Why didn't it work? Alex Pierce broke his arm twice. Yeah, oh, yeah but also, they, like, uh, was it Eliza Riley's article that we keep touching on? Their last quarters. They would have three awesome quarters, and their last quarter would be like, Oh, we forgot how to play footy. But, it, but in the last four games, like you didn't have Sean Darcy, you didn't have Tracy, you didn't mm. have Alex Pierce. Yep. There's like three big pillars as well. Yeah. So not ideal. I also think they need another small forward, which... Because, yeah, Schultz is gone, obviously. Yeah, yeah, there's potentially one coming in the form of Shea Bolton if he turns yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. So they are in a right spot. I also get Nat Fife out of that midfield. If his name was Liam McCallion, he'd be gone straight into the sun. That is the most random thing you've ever said. But no, what I'm saying is because <laughs> Nat Fife, well, two times well, you midfield. did win a Brownlow. I did, so. yeah. I did. Yeah. Two time Brownlow medalist can't kick. He's lost his speed. Gone. No, don't retire him because he's still got trade he though. Got, you could no, trade. No, he doesn't. You could, you could trade. I reckon you could trade for that what? But not that much. But th- it's better than uh, retiring. So you, so you said he's got trade value, and you're like, oh, no, no, not much. As in, like. It's better. I think Stats Boy just wants him on North Melbourne. No, I don't want him at all, but I'm saying that a team would take him for something. No, right? they If you wouldn't. retire him, you get nothing. It'd That's be like, saying. we're giving you pick 96. No, it is it'd be more genuine than that. It'd be more steak knives. You put Nat Fife on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> What are you That's a different return? thing. That's a different thing. Thirty-five bucks. You've got to pick it up. Like, <laughs> yeah, what are we yeah, doing? Yeah, you've got to send a train. Or do you just put him out on the uh, out on the front lawn and just hope that someone takes him? Yeah. I agree that they don't need him though. Their midfield's too good. He just yeah ruins that sort of slows him down. Sink. Slows him down as well. I think you put him in the forward <laughs> pocket and just, just they did that. He didn't do anything. Mm. Uh, yeah, the Nat Five thing is a bit weird. Yep. Anyway, yeah, Freo. I th- still think though that defense was that good at times this year. Their team on paper is a finals team. They. It, but they just need to yeah, finish well, off the last quarter. Top four until like, well, oh. three weeks out from the end of the season. So yep. anyway, tough one for EO. They are very close, however. Essendon, how do we fix a problem <laughs> like the Bombers? That's impossible, Jim. Well, it started. No more Sheeds, no more Dodoro. Hmm. Amazingly, their over-under was 11 and a half. They pushed because they had a draw. <laughs> I forgot about the draw, yeah. The 11, <laughs> 11 and, and a half actually hit. They had 11 and a half wins. What happens in uh, yeah, the betting with that one? Amazingly, yeah. we'll we just get our money back because yeah. we just all went under, under, yeah. under. Mm. Yeah. So I'm claiming that one. That's I'm a, claiming that's that, That's a victory. Yeah. Yeah. That's a win. Right. They didn't make finals as well, so that's yeah. a victory. Now, Essendon, how do we fix it? Get Christian Petrarca. It's a weird one that his name has definitely not come up at all with the Bombers. Big crowds. And I'm like, yeah. this, it feels like, you know, he's childhood mates with Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, big Bombers fan. <laughs> I'm just putting things together this here, boys. This is the weirdest connection I've ever heard. I'm just going absolute Charlie Day yeah, on the board. Just... Off we go. But Petrarca, look, the biggest thing with the Bombers is that they had the most disposals per game in the comp. Yeah. <laughs> that is wild. Get a good forward line. Just get, kick it. Like, their inside no, 50s were absolutely... Their forward line sucks. Inside 50s was shocking. 
Their disposals, disposal efficiency wasn't that great as well. And you just have like all these sort of weird and wonky stats around. Well, they also got destroyed on transition. Anytime they turned the mm. ball over, other teams would steamroll them and they're just like, oh, it's happened again. Yeah. So def- that their midfielders don't work hard enough. Their, for- their forwards definitely don't work hard enough. They've got the highest paid player in the league who can't yeah, use Yeah, Ben McClay didn't help, help them at, at all. Anytime. Yeah. So yeah. that's exactly what my second point is. Get two hard-nosed defenders that could beat up everybody else on the team. <laughs> They just need one. Prove me wrong. They literally need like but Jake what, Stringer's running roughshod over this team, and everyone's just afraid of him because he's bigger than them. But what defenders are available to come? <laughs> That's in? That's exactly the problem. They just need like to be honest. Like we we gave him tra- like we trashed him all year. But Nick Hine, the bricklayer, just has like absolute vibes of just like accountability. Yeah, like, if you screw up, I'm gonna fight you. Yeah, he, he, he <laughs> and they, have, five. they he, have absolutely none of that because they've just got like a bunch of like willowy young dudes yeah. who just don't have that grunt. Like even Zeret, like God bless his cotton socks, he's a hard worker, but no one's afraid of Zach Merritt. No, no. they don't have any of those big guys like like you said, Christian Petrarca. People are afraid to stand. No in the one's way scared of, of Essendon. Like, ah, that's mm. cute. Go but their forward you. liner, I think, will be okay. The They've got Nate Cuddy. They've got Str- I know Stringer. He actually had a lot of goals this year. Their fall line. That's because it was bad. a contract year stats. No, I'm just saying. I don't think their fall line's too bad. They just feel light. Langford's off. been really like good. Coldwell, Nick Martin, Ridley and Co. Like there's a lot of talent, but at the same time, it's also just like no one's afraid. But there's also a bunch of people that are going to leave that can't get a game at the moment. So someone like Hobbs might leave. Sardis might leave. It's like, oh yeah, this is great. You're still going to be in the same spot yeah. next so, year. So as I pointed out though. The first thing, so the Petrarca and the most disposals per game, they are still, however, bad at contested possessions and clearances. Again, not tough. Petrarca, mm. I might fix that. One other it. one was maybe don't trade away uh, all Australian type Wingers, players. Yeah. yeah. Well, in fairness, this time last year, no one thought Massimo no, Dombrosio it, would be it, worth it. A lot of people that. thought he was Hawthorne good. But this, also, but this also goes to the point is they're not playing the younger players yeah. that have all this talent in the world. Agreed. Nice. We just fixed Essendon. <laughs> St Kilda! Here's a basket case. Oh, we beat the Blues. Enjoy 12th, idiots. Uh, the Saints, <laughs> over and was 11 and a half. They made finals last year. They finished 12th this season. The result was under because they won 11 games. Come we on, Saints. all went over. They made the finals and all they had to do was not, they didn't even have to make the finals with that amount of wins and they still- We were win. just like, oh yeah, they'll win 12 games and yeah. we'll be like, sure. So there's two easy things to fix St Kilda, I yes. think. One, convince Max King <laughs> to switch places with Ben King. And then just play the footy we saw in the second I half of the that, yeah. season. I think they will. Can Ross Can Ross commit to- Get to, out of the mud. Yeah. Just get out of the mud. You were like, this is how we're going to play. This isn't working. This is how we're going to play. It's not working. This is, oh, maybe we should change. It's like, hey, he figured it out, brain genius. But I think it's also a lot of players did come back from injury at some point because late in the season you had Wanganine Malira running, you had Brad Hill running. You still didn't have Liam Henry there late in the season. When he comes back and he's going to add more run, Cooper Sharman turned yeah, into they, prime yeah. Nick Rewalt at mm-hmm. times. I agree with that, but they Rowan had so Marshall. many guys that can just run. you got Sinclair and Wanganine Miller who any team would go, I would take him a halfback. They are absolute freaks. Yeah. And then you got Ross going, no, we're just going to make it really congested and not use our run. Whereas in 2023, foot. when we were like, this is a fun season, they had a couple of games at the G to help them get into the finals that they were awesome. They just run, 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 play really fast attacking footy. Ross just has to get out of his old ways uh, and say trust, to be a good team. Do you trust Ross Lyon though to go at the start of next year going, hey, what worked at the second half of last year, we're going to stick yes. to that. Because how good were they no against chance. Carlton? That I think, no, I think they will. I, uh, I, reckon they I don't will. know if they will because of, yeah, Ross it is too stubborn. Mm. No, nah, I reckon he, he'll have his Birkenstocks on. He'll be just going... <laughs> Yep, that'll work. <laughs> was he? What was he? I don't know. Yeah, what was, was that? that? <laughs> what was that? Is that medical? Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. With, yeah. It was with, with Dimmer. Dimmer. With Dimmer. Okay. Hanging out with Dimmer. It was with Dimmer. Speaking of Dimmer, up at the Gold Coast, above the 28th parallel, the over under was 11 and a half. <gasps> they won 11 games, did the Suns. Yes. You were a truther at the start. Oh, of the I'm off them. <laughs> so off them. Stats Boy and I went under. <laughs> Alex went over. Uh, how to fix the Suns? Very easily. Change the logo. Very like easily that. fix the Suns by just going, we're playing, can we play every game at home? <laughs> Up north, every at least above the 20th parallel. 20th parallel. Even at the Gabba, just play a few games at the Gabba. We'll play more games at the Gabba. Darwin. We'll play Darwin. a bunch of games in like the NT and we'll smash it. Just pay like the AFL heaps of money and no, just no, play get, every no, game No, get the, Tas- uh, the Northern Territory government to give the AFL money and be like, yeah, more games up there. But also, <laughs> I think the biggest thing for the Suns is you need at least a bit of a, you've got Dimmer there. You need a philosophical and quite literal Changing of the guard. Yep. Change your logo, change your uniforms, 
Put your mate Jim in charge. And then Off you keep, keep just the forget, trumpet. Forget about all these crappy years. Like I think this year was actually their most ever wins. Which like is ever, sad. Which is sad because it was only 11, but they still finished. Well, they finished 13th. So they, they, they beat North, it's a win They sort beat of. North Melbourne and West Coast. They make the finals. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Uh, also, just kick the ball to Jed Walter, my beloved, beloved Jed. I put that in there. Give a bit of confidence to the uh, to the legend. But seriously, the Suns have got that much talent on this list. Uh, They've got more academy kids coming through. Yep. Defensively, they need to be more accountable and better. Mm-hmm. Uh, just win away. One more midfield. Just win away. Quietly. So the joke one about like play all your games at home, just learn how to win away from home. Like yeah, It's not that hard. Years, Come on. What are we doing here? Come on. How do we fix... The Melbourne Demons. The over-under was 13 and a half. They won 11 games. I went over. I Alex thought Melbourne was big on this good. one. Yeah. Melbourne, look, Alex was down, you know, down speaking, that. down voting Melbourne all year. Yeah. And uh, he was right. Collected some dollary dues at six bucks to miss the finals. Very, Very nice. nice. So how do we fix Melbourne? Somehow convince Petrarca to stay? Or I think that's a big thing. Do you get the biggest trade haul you possibly can for him I and rebuild. I don't think there's anything that can fix this club in one year. I think they I agree, are yeah. on the way to a big tailspin. They are at the point where Richmond were and they don't realise it. Mm, I agree. And it's like, oh, no, because if if May and Lever keep getting injured like they did this season, same with Max, they've got no backup for him. Clary, who knows where his head's at. Petrarca leaves. They will dead set win seven yeah, games Petrarca next Yeah, Petrarca leaves. Year. Clary's out of form. They don't Their have midfielder a, looks. A midfielder looks cooked. They still can't kick a score. Yeah, we so said it. Is, this, you got Trent Rivers. You got Jack Varney. It's going to be fine. We said it <laughs> this time London. last year. It's like get a forward. Yeah, we. we I think we've actually yeah said this in our last season wrap. Just they just need to recruit a power forward, and they still haven't done that. Uh, they've got key pillars everywhere else. Just like, get a there's going to be some stupid mega six team trade that involves a king brother ending up at Melbourne's full forward. Ooh. Max is. Washed almost already, but I have Harry to Mackay it. because the Blues are like we've got Ashton Moyer now. We're laughing. Ashton <laughs> Moyer, oh, I love you, Harry. Uh, but I think I think they need uh, another decent inside midfielder. They yeah. need a backup ruckman for Max because, as we saw during the year, they're like ah, but they didn't have anyone. Yeah, like not cashing in on Petty last year. Two first rounders. Mm. Ridiculous. That's got to be one of the biggest misses ever. Um, and they just need a power forward. That's yep. literally what they need. That's it. We fixed them. Done. <laughs> Adelaide, how do you fix a problem like oh, the Adelaide Crows? The overall is 12 and a half. They won eight games, Stats Boy. Stats Boy was all over it. It was his lock of the year. They top, were going to be four. top four. Crumb, what are you doing? They look so good at their best. Alex went over. I was oh. the only one who understood what was going to happen with Adelaide. And uh, I looked into Matthew Nix's eyes. And went, <laughs> There's an afraid man. A man who's oh. afraid. That's like uh, joking. How, how do you for- fix it? So simply for me, just have any sort of defensive plan or accountability. We said at the start of the, year, of the season, defense. they had, a, I think they were top six defense. And then, yeah, after that, they just cooked it. It was weird. Uh, I feel like Adelaide, when they're up and about, they are they play inexorable football. Very like, fun. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. The problem is how do they get there? And it just seems like it can be very, very hard when they're at home. Sometimes it's almost like fait accompli that it'll be good. Outside of that, though, you just need that spark. And they don't have... The spark. They do. He just you got the Dutch. Bow, bow. The spark, the spark it's like but he the missed a lot of games. Yeah. The leadership spark from the Transformers movie from 1986. <laughs> That's what they need. What? The Matrix of leadership. <laughs> they have no leadership. That's yep. exactly where it is. Yeah, they, they need don't. the Matrix of leadership. They need the you got the Dutch. Bow. So you Rankin played. Power. Rankin played 15 games this year. Oh, that's more than I thought. To be fair, sure. That's not too bad. Jordan Dawson, good. Very good. Rochelle, good. Thriller. Jordan Dawson awesome. probably at his best this year. Thriller will win a Coleman. Ooh. It's like the likes of what? Hinge, Scholl. Scholl was really good. No, Scholl was Saligo. good. Like, it's like they have this sort of baseline level talent. The it's drops the, off after that, though. Yeah. It's the two-way stuff that breaks your heart. Yeah. It's like they're just even, an even worse version of Carlton defensively in the mid. So yeah. fix that. Off we go. Uh, and the other point is get someone else with X Factor the complete mid slash half back. Yep. I don't, I don't mind that, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. get rid of push that, Rory. That, push push Rory. Okay, they'll get Alex Neil Bullen. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's exactly. He's going to help. He will. Maybe, maybe Lacocious. Mm. Don't mind that. Don't like his hair, but I like him. <laughs> wow. West Coast, how do you? Oh, Jared Schofield, get Jared Schofield out of there because he's got too many too tattoos. many tattoos. <laughs> Can't be a coach with tattoos. I did love that someone pointed out. Well, if Caroline Wilson had said that about a woman, <laughs> so, oh, I can't be a coach. You've Got tattoos. You're gone, mate. What? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a problem. Jared Schofield, I mean, he's just like, nah, I'm good. 
He might still get the job. It's because no one else wants it. No one is, it, is, is it? You get the job because you're the only applicant. Well, the two greatest words in the English language: default. Default. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we go. <laughs> uh, the over under was four and a half. They went over because they won five. We all went under. Oh. Great job, everybody. How do we get that one wrong? Because uh, they beat Melbourne. How do oh, we yeah. fix it? Make Harley Reid captain coach. <laughs> I put it, I put that on there. I was like, why? Why not? Why not? Why not? Whoa, Holly Reid, Bam Lamb. Whoa, Holly Reid, Bam Lamb. He's a captain coach, Bam Lamb. Are you taking to the premiership? Oh, I was gone. Take to the premiership. Uh, no, but he can be co-captain with our beloved Oscar Allen. Yeah. We do like Oscar, Oscar Allen. Oscar Allen, two plus goals is his full name. He is nodding along. Yeah, yeah, he is. I do love a bit of Oscar Allen, obviously, and I just feel like they're losing Tom Barras. That's brutal, yeah. This is still another two years in the wilderness. This is at least. four years in the wilderness. Like, mm. There's enough sort of pipeline stuff that in a couple of years they'll be decent-ish, but wow. Get picks in. Yep. Don't trade your picks for Baker, for Rioli, for uh, the other guy from Richmond that wants to leave his name off completely spaced. Baker, uh, uh, Bolton. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, Graham, 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 thank Graham. you, Leo. Sorry. Don't trade picks. You need kids, not dudes who are just okay. Get the kids in. Yep. Agreed. Because last year you had one pick in the top 30, number one. And that, yeah. Like you got and, Harley Reid, obviously he's a and beast. what a pick. But, yeah. Great pick. But, but another two or three kids would have helped. A lot of their young guys aren't that good either. So yeah. that's, uh, uh, yeah. Other than maybe Jimmy, he's, he's okay. He's, he's good in the back line. But mm. yeah, they, they just need to get kids in. Yep. Nice one. Uh, get kids in. Kick the ball to J, the J train. And off yep. we go. Yeah. Agreed. North Melbourne, how do we fix a problem oh. like the kangaroos? Dad's boy, fire Clarko into the sun. Uh, the over-under was five and a half. A very, very Quite optimistic nice. over-under. Why? Can, I, can we go, we go back to the Argo? I did not it's say It's because over. North Melbourne had just beaten Collingwood in the preseason. Stats guy was confident in North Ball. He's like, Clarko ball, let's go! <laughs> no way I said he over. He shirts there. off tearing it off. You did. I watched the replay. So the yeah. amount of our positivity dropped off, I reckon, after about round five. I've been so negative. I was so positive at the start of the season. Yeah. What the hell's going on there? My favourite thing is that Alex and I both went under. Mine was a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honestly, fair. Nailed it. And uh, Stats boy was all over. How have I said over there? How do you fix North Melbourne? Recruit some tall players. That's what I've said. Recruit some tall players. Every single draft, we're like, what's the smallest player in this draft? Brady Rollins goes, how tall is he? Is he o- is he over 180? No, we don't want him. Under 182 centimetres, thank you very much. That's what they. That's what he always picks. Uh, the other one is just practice a proper game plan. A ball movement. Before the season, they said, we're going to play, what was it? Clarko ball, or North ball. What, North ball. North we ball. Clarko. Jim wanted a Clarko, Clarko ball. ball. Uh, we were like, all right, this is going to be exciting. We're actually going to take on the game. Then the second half of the season, we're like, we're just going to bomb it down the line every time. Back to the old ways of the last five years. So I can't stand that. Actually practice the game plan and use it in the game. Yeah, tall players would be handy. You've got Curtis, yeah. Zerha, and Suva in that forward line. Yeah. And it's like you can see at least the outline of how Common. that could kind of work. Common can go but forward. Geez, they need like one more dude yeah, in that you forward need, line. You yeah. need a- and it, well, we need more, even more of a back. When Griffith Logue went down, he's, I actually really like him. But then we had no backs. We had no yeah. tall backs. And then if we get another back, we can put Combin forward and everything's happy. So the good thing you is need, you'll pick two. Yeah, so. I was about to say two more tall dudes. And I bet you will pick another midfielder, which we Jack don't Smith need. And yeah. Like, ah, sick. Pick, pick Langford. Take Langford. Run him off halfback. He rules. Nice one. Nice. Finally, how do you fix the tie? You oh. don't. Yellow and black. Oh, the cliff. There. We got yeah. this one, right? Amazingly enough, the over-under was nine and a half. Nine and a half. We all went yeah. under because they won two games. Locked it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, how do we fix it? I my first thing was burn it to the ground. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Burn punt road to the ground. You just oh. like you can't turn this around in a season or two. No. This is just draft, 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 they've draft re- as much as you can before Tazzy comes in, get as much young talent in. They look like they've realised it before West Coast having like picks. Well, all their players want to leave. Give us all of the picks. North had uh, the media before the start of the season was North who would have the mass exodus. Richmond, obviously, Rich, having the mass exodus. But it's players. great because they're going to have what with when you have Bolton, Rioli, Baker, That's a Graham, lot of good players, Lee, yeah. potentially a few others. Maybe you get rid of Tom Lynch and go, "Hey, I'm wh- saying, hang a second, that might be how you fix Melbourne. You go get Tom Lynch." But is, is it also where, where Richmond go? We will cover eighty percent, but we want. Your first rounder next year or your second yeah, rounder. Yeah. Like, I know everyone's like, oh, Tom Lynch is so injured. But if you're picking up the tab, they'll be like, oh, we. Maybe. If we only have to give him 100 grand, yeah. That's not bad. Because he's on a ridiculous amount next year. I would be pushing out Tom Lynch because you've got, um, was it LaFau? He'll come back from his knee injury. Yeah. Um, but Kaziski's horrible. Oh, like, yeah, but you're going to have to deal with that for the next. maybe forward. You're going to have to deal with that for the next couple of years anyway. But I would try and push some other players out. I'd be like, anyone want Camden McIntosh pick 40? Anyone? Ah, okay, we're stuck with it. Yeah. I would honestly offer up Noah Bolter as well. Tom Lynch Ooh. is 31. 
Yeah, what is he? I, I would I would offer up well, Tom Lynch, worth much then. and I'd be like, we will cover his salary for however long's left on his contract, and try and get a second rounder. That's remarkable. He's thirty one. I know. I thought he was younger. Yeah, I don't mind that. So I, you want it? You want them? Richmond need to have ten to twelve picks in the first two rounds of the next two years. Yeah. Otherwise, they're cooked. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And this year's draft looks pretty good. Cool. Yeah. This is basically just different ways of saying burn it to the ground, start again, yep. off you go. You'll be fine. I have more faith in Richmond turning around before West Coast, Melbourne, and North Melbourne. All right, out Ooh. of those 10 teams that we've just talked about and that we've just fixed, who plays finals next year? Because there's always somebody who okay. – there's usually two teams at least. Oh, the stat actually Richmond. came true that someone outside the uh, top 10 will go into the top four. I think it was Geelong this year. They've gone back into the top four. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so who does it? I reckon it's probably Frio. Frio. Uh, I'll go Pies. I think they got a good enough team to go back up there again. The thing is with the Pies, you can also see what happened this year happening just yeah. again. Yeah, or depends on bad injuries. Depends resort, about uh, injuries. resort to loser talk? Unless they get Petrarca. Their team's still really good. They don't have, they just don't have the picks or the capital. We all know that. Yeah. They don't know that though. <laughs> I'm trying to do If you do, don't know what you don't know, then I dangerous. love how their fans like John Noble's worth a first rounder. It's like, come on. Oh, late first, we'll get it done. It's I like, can, it's like, pick, pick 37. Nice. All yeah. right, there you go. Those were the 10 teams that did not make the finals. Fans out there of those teams, you know, just burn your sage. Feel good about this offseason. Kick some tires on some trades. I'll be doing. Just keep listening to the AFL Today show as we keep you updated on your team's progress in the offseason. It's going to be a chaotic one either way. Right, but before the offseason starts, what happens, gentlemen? Bit of finals. Yeah, finals the, actual, the yeah. actual footy that matters. Usually when you say that, you keep going. But We've looked back. <laughs> We're now looking a little bit forward. This yes. is the first week, first look of round one of the AFL finals. This is, of course, brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. Get excited. I'm excited. What are we going to talk about very quickly? So with another week to go before these games obviously start, uh, this is just a very quick look at this matchup between these each of the two teams in these <coughs> four games. Uh, have a look at an interesting historical matchup. Yep. We'll set you up for next weekend with just a bit of a, this is where the odds are at the moment. This is what it looks like. This is how it's shaping up. And the stats boys got a couple of stats. So always. all odds are brought to you by our friends at Top Sport, of course. Let's start, of course, next Thursday. Because you know what's back? Thursday yeah. night oh, footy. Let's go. It's finally back. Thursday night Come footy. On. I'm excited. Port Adelaide will be hosting the Geelong Cats at the Adelaide Oval, 7.40 on Thursday night. Port Adelaide are $1.49 favourites to Geelong $2.60. How do we feel about that? I think that's almost bang on. I think Port are 11 and a half point favourites. Yeah, Port at home are just a much better side. If it were, yeah, if it was at Geelong, they'd be favourites. Whoever was home here would be favourites. Right, the over-under is 164 and a half. I feel like the over is the uh, look there. With a couple of, uh, I don't know, the Thursday night games. If you think back to like when we saw Power play at Gather Gather Over, Gather yes, Around, yes. absolutely flying. And a couple of the other games that they've had this year, they've put up some massive scores. Well, Geelong had the game of the weekend and it was really high scoring as well at Gather Around. And also Port Adelaide just went and smashed Sydney at home a couple of rounds ago. Don't know if that would hit exactly. the over. The Swans didn't score enough. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah true actually. 164.5. My instant initial lean is over that. Uh Oh, but Let's, Jim, finals pressure, mate. <laughs> the first finals game, yeah. No, but in terms of the stats, I'd be going I think over. we always say finals pressure. Oh, it's just, and then it's just like a randomly free-flowing, amazingly high Maybe score. early on, but like prelims and after, definitely finals pressure. Yeah, yeah. I think it. once you get past the first couple or of semis, rounds, maybe. Yeah. Uh, if we look at the 2023 AFL finals and how they went, in the first round we had – Sydney and Carlton was definitely unders. Sydney mm. Carlton was 74 to 68. Yep. Yeah, under. Collingwood Melbourne was 60. Oh, that's Melbourne and Collingwood. 101 77, the game that we went to yeah. yep. at the G. And was Brisbane awesome. was 123 75 over power. So, yeah. but you also look at, yeah, you look at the teams as well where Giants had the tsunami going, it was unstoppable, and Brisbane were just Brisbane always going to stomp up. They always yeah. score big, yeah, especially in the finals. Last year they were. Yep. All right, historical matchup. Here we go. What do we got here, stats man? Uh, 2007. Yeah. Cast your mind back. I actually remember 2007. You probably don't. Round 21. No, I do. I do. Sure. I Good. remember this game, actually. What happened in 2007? Oh, I got nothing. Rattle off everything. I was, it was in school, probably. I don't know. I've got no idea, to be honest. <laughs> Give us this matchup then. Go. Sure. Uh, I thought you were going to say it. Uh, so, round 21, 2007. Uh, this is obviously the year that Geelong went on to win the grand final and absolutely smashed them and got revenge against Port, but Port so, won this game. So, it's an important point, right? Yes. Because this... 
these historical matchups are just interesting games. Next week, we're going to look at actual finals yes. matchups Port between these two teams. Want to, uh, look at that one. Port's going to be a tough one because they're all 2007. Did they just say 2007? They're just getting PTSD. <laughs> yeah. Port Adelaide trauma. And away we go. So this one is from round 21. In that it's a exact positive one. same year. Positive one. That it got then very bad mm. a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a positive one for Port. So Geelong 101, Port 106, classic match. Goal for goal for most of the second half. The forgotten uh, Ablett, Nathan Ablett, got three goals. That was pretty random. I just had a look at that. Prime Sean Burgoyne, Silk was awesome. 22 disposals, three goals. This was also the Powers' only win against Geelong between 2005 and 2014. So they were oh. 14 losses, one win. And so I've just found, oh, did the Power win any games around this time? One. One game between 2005 and uh, 2014. A few finals in there. Obviously a grand final. But Port fans were up and about saying, we're going to win the flag. And then obviously uh, Geelong got their revenge in the grand final. But this was an awesome match. Sean Bergham was amazing, I think. Uh, Stevie J had three goals as well. Just both teams had absolute superstars. And classic match in 2007. Nice one. This is an inter- It is like a, uh, it's an evocative kit matchup because they have played a bunch yes. of finals and like some big matchups. So it's kind of fun. So... In terms of each of these teams, Port Adelaide obviously finished second. Cats slide into third with the GWS loss on the weekend. Yep. Port Adelaide were eighth on offense this year, third in defense, which is like when you think about the way that they played, a little bit of a surprise that they were third defensively. What do you think, Stats, man? Uh, no, they've got some big guys down there. I don't, I don't mind it. They've got a lot of guys that run off half back, and you go, oh, well, they don't defend. But their big guys are the ones that, yeah, hold them, hold them strong. I think I like that. I like that defense. Nice one. Alex? Mm. Uh, doesn't really shock me because I've always had concerns about their forward line throughout the mm. year. Like, it, Georgiades was in and out, Dixon in and out, Marshall in and out, Rioli's form has just gone like this all season. And you've relied on a couple of goals here and there from Butters and Rosie and the Hornet pops up with one or two. Whereas their defense, you're just like, ah, oh, if you bomb it long, you're screwed. Yeah, they're, and then they're they just so, take intercept marks. Their big are so good. Just like, bye! Yeah, yeah, and then Elias just like, grab, bang. Oh, yeah. But I am worried now that with their defense now that there's no Houston and the bloke that ripped his hamstring off the bone the other day. He's not playing, so... Their runoff half back is a lot of concern. Was it Farrell that went down? Yeah, it might have been actually. Yes, I think you're right. Yep. Nice one. Flip side, Geelong, randomly enough, third on offense. <laughs> yeah, but they kicked 200 points in the last game. Doesn't count. 94.1 <laughs> points, but I'm pretty sure the average is out, though, even with like that big score against West Coast. Yeah. 11th in yeah. defense. Kane Farrell did do his hamstring yep. and he's out for the season. So a lot of their runoff half back is gone. Yeah. Right. 83.8 points per game they surrendered to. The Cats finishing 15-8 and eight after where they were mid-season. Bit of a surprise. Pretty funny. They've, they, they bounced back so well. That was, that was incredible. I called their season dead and buried when Geelong beat them by 70. And you're always right. So yeah. this is weird. <laughs> uh, so that's the sort of matchup, right? You've got a decent defense in Port, a decent offense in Geelong. It's the unstoppable object versus the immovable object. Exactly. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I like this. It will be fun. It will be fun. So it should, that's what sort of leads me to going, all right, <laughs> defensively Port Adelaide – are meant to be good, but I feel like some of the like pace with which they pay, play, like they'll just get into random shootouts. It's kind of fun. This game will be one in the midfield. Yeah, I agree. Especially Geelong's midfield compared to Port's midfield, you'd say Port are going to smash them in the clearances. Yep. All right. We'll dig, dig into this more deeply next week, but some stats, stats, man. Yeah, we've got Geelong are actually really good at Adelaide over the last four seasons. Four and one there. There's a few games against uh, Adelaide in there, but they've just played really well out that side of town. Uh, Port Adelaide, they've won the last two finals against the Cats at the Adelaide Oval. One was by uh, fifty some, uh, 43 points and the other one was by 16 points. So that's an average of 30 points. They just, yeah, love playing the Cats in a final at the Adelaide Oval. Port as well, they've covered the line in the last three meetings with Geelong. So that line is uh, minus 11.5 and $1.88 with top sport. So I don't mind that one as a sneaky sneaky bet. The stats boy's best bet. Yeah, <coughs> I really like that. I know the line is a little bit bigger than some other matches this weekend. But, uh, sorry, next weekend. But 11.5, I think Port can cover that one. Nice one. Alex, 11.5. Uh, I'll end Geelong. Ooh, I'll end Geelong with okay. the start. Tight game. Port Adelaide have just bounced out of finals in ridiculous fashion the last That's few years. That's the only thing years. I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah. a squeaky bum time for Ken and the boys. They love a uh, straight uh, straight set. Straight set Texas, don't they? I got plus 11 for Geelong. Yeah. Plus, well, plus 11 and a half. Yep. Interesting. We'll have our final picks next week. Nice. Friday's elimination final. Should be on the Saturday Arvo. Bulldogs, $1.74. Three and a half point favorites over the Hawks, who are $2.05. Is this where I just say the AFL has moved the AFLW game to the MCG? Really? Yeah. 
Interesting. Well, have they before the game? I hate that. That is awesome. No, it's not. Think about all the people that actually plan to go to the I AFLW know, that have now missed out on tickets because it's a sellout. There's still going to be four ga- more games at Wittenova. I really like that. They're, you get the two both games. more games at Wittenova. Anyway, I like that. It's a horrendous, it's a horrendous own goal from the AFL. <laughs> Who would have seen that coming? <laughs> uh, over-under is 166.5. This is flying over. Ooh. This football is going to be absolutely pinging around. I've got some stats that uh, go against that. Don't I've, care. Give us, <laughs> give, us, Damn it. give us some stats then, stats. No, I don't, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> no. Well, before you do that, 94.4 points per game. That's the Western Bulldogs. They yeah. had the second best offense this year. Yep. And... The, the best, best defense. To be fair, Gino Gress just didn't show up their offense on the weekend. That yeah. helped him jump, I think, two spots. But amazing defense. Hawthorne's well. sixth offense at 90.9 <laughs> points per game. Six on defense. Yeah. So very middle. Very know. helped by keeping uh, North Melbourne to 30 points last yeah, week. Yeah, talking on the number one and number six ranked defenses, five of the last seven meetings between these two have also gone under the total points. Uh, so I'm leaning towards the under 166 and a half. Where have those games nine. been played? Yeah, how a many lot of those Tassie? were in Tassie. Yeah. And a few a few of those were at the uh, G as well, though. Yeah. Nice one. All right. What are the sort of key aspects that you're looking at for this game, Alex? Uh, I'm looking at, so... The dogs will want to keep this, keep the footy in the air using their tall forward line. Like you have a look, they've got three forwards over two hundred centimeters. Yeah. Hawthorne's tallest defender, I believe, is one ninety two. Leo, please not if you know this, maybe a bit <laughs> I higher. I think it's a little bit higher. Yeah, though, but, but it's like there's a massive height advantage that the yeah. Western Bulldogs have over Hawthorne. Hawthorne are like bring it to the ground and we we will just mosquito flare it and the footy will just fly out to the wings and that's where they'll beat them. If if Hawthorne will win this game, it's they're scoring 80 points in transition from defense. Whereas if it's clear if it's really clearance and contested footy, this is where Bond's like, watch this. Yeah. Nice. So the last time these two teams actually played at the MCG was 2019 in round two, which is yep. pretty crazy. Uh and so when you talk about the unders though, stats boy, yeah, it has been Tazzy. Marvel, Tazzy, Marvel, Tazzy, Marvel. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm about flying Marvel. over. I meant to say Marvel instead of MCG, yeah. A little, bit, little bit tricky. No, fair so enough. the G aspect of it, I think, we, especially with the last game that these two teams played back in round eight this year, was 98 to 91. Yeah. So okay. I feel like the over, over is Yeah, that's fair enough, yeah. Uh, feeling pretty good about it too. So we'll see what happens there. Any other stats there, stats man? Uh, talking about they've matched up in the finals, won all in the finals since uh, 2008. Hawks matched, smashed the Dogs in a qualifying final. Obviously, the Dogs, I can talk about that in a historical matchup. They got their revenge in 2016, win that uh, awesome, awesome so final. So each time that they played, the team that won went on to win the flag. Exactly, yeah. Exactly right. You heard it here first. So, Whoever wins this <laughs> game, winning the flag. Yeah, possibly. It's just maths. There you go. Simple as that. Nice one. Nice. Do you want to talk about the historical matchup? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so 2016 semi final. This is the awesome Dogs run. Obviously, they went on to win the flag. Bulldogs 107, Hawks 84. Dogs won by that uh, by 23. You got uh, Dogs ended the Hawks' chances at four peat. Everyone's like, oh, the Hawks are unstoppable. They could uh, win the four peat. Obviously, Dogs ended that. Picking his finals mode, in, it was engaged. 24 disposals, three goals. His whole finals run was just one of the best of all time, I reckon. Hodgie as well is just known as the, one of the best finals players of all time. Friend of the program. Friend of the program. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 20 disposals and two goals. Dogs just dominated. Bevo, I've read, I've read some old articles going, he's one of the great masterminds of our uh, generation. And then we've been bagging him ever since. But yeah, just an awesome effort by the Dogs. And that's a really good historical matchup. Nice one. So your vibe on this for the Stats Boy best bet? For this game on, you know, a week out. I'm going under just because the dogs, what did they keep GWS to last week? I know it was tough conditions, but GWS were in really good offensive form. It was like 40-something points that GWS scored. So I'm going the under. I think, uh, yeah, the tolls will go really well for the dogs. But Hawks, I don't know. I just think he's going to go under. I'm still going to go over. Gonna, that's all right. Over. The line at three and a half, I'm kind of, I'm leaning yeah, the line, fourth one for this anyway. I'd so. be leaning... Yeah, towards Hawks. That's a Hawks. Hawks. I just said Hawks. It's the Hawks playing Hawk an away ball. game Hawk, yeah. at home against a team that's played there twice the, this year. Twice this year, exactly six right. times in the last three years. And exactly. I think that those games were before like the start of June. Yep. Saturday next week, qualifying final number one, Sydney GWS at the SCG. As usual, all these odds via Top Sport. Dollar sixty two, the Swans at the moment. Seven and a half point favorites over GWS to two dollars twenty five. It feels about right. Seven and a half GWS have been pretty good. Yeah. Swans at home. Battle of the Bridge. It's a big Sydney derby. And the uh, over-under is 172.5. I can't wait to get there. Sure. 3.20 p.m. Oh, yeah, you're going. I'm That's going cool. up and back. Yeah, the nice. up and back in a day. Yep. So that's a Jeez. brutally long day, especially if the Swans lose. But no, it's I'm pumped. 
All right. Awesome. Yeah. Historical matchup. What are we looking at here? Yeah, we got the uh, round five, 2021. Bit of a random oh. one, but uh, yeah, Alex won't want to talk about this, but it was an awesome match. Sydney 69, GWS 71. The nice. Giants won by two points at the SCG. Absolute nail biter. You got Josh Kelly had uh, the sealer, the match sealer. Absolutely clutch goal by him. Or well, the winner. The winner, you could say. Uh, extremely inaccurate by the Giants. Toby led that. He kicked one goal seven, Toby Green. He did kick. Uh, he was tearing his hair out. He wasn't happy at all. Very rare for him. But he kicked a clutch goal in the last quarter. That was his only goal, which Ooh. is pretty funny. Buddy as well. Buddy was amazing. Uh, yeah. Alex will remember that. Five goals, four goal assists, and five contested marks. It was one of those yeah. on my back, boys. But, but he's like doing everything, and then he's like, oh, can someone else just jump on board yeah. with me? And then they lost in the end. But two-point game, one of the best Battle of the Bridges. 2021. Mm, what a yeah. year it was. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> some stats for this one. Stats, man. The Battle of the Bridge. Yes. Sydney have won five of the last six. And lost the other one in the last five seconds. Wow. But the GWS yeah. in finals, however. Yeah, so you got GWS in finals 3-0 and against Sydney. They're like... Yep, we just dominate 2016, 2018, and 2021. Well, there we go. Sydney's bogey team. So 20, yeah, 2016 was at Stadium Australia. The Giants were just better in the second half. The Swans were abysmal there. 2018, yep. aside from that Port Adelaide game a month ago, that was the worst Sydney Swans performance I've ever seen. In 2021, the Swans had about a 1,000 chances in the last quarter to yep. win it. Kept hitting the post and kept missing. It was in Tassie, weird stuff. I was headbutting the TV. <laughs> uh, but the Swans this year have belted the Giants both times. And then in the last three weeks with the Swans, the way their form's turned around, it's like, oh, yeah, they've, they've turned it around at the right time. Like, I'm pretty confident the Swans will get the job done here. That's right. Sydney, obviously the best offense in the league, 97.5 points a game. Seventh defensively, 76.9. Yep. Uh, for the GWS Greater Western Sydney Giants, it is a big, big sound. It is a big, big sound. But they're only seventh on offense. Yeah. I think that's because of that middle four. part of the season. If you take out, what was it? Six weeks. The start of the season, they were the first. Well, they had that week offense. they kicked 30 points against the Dogs. And then last week, yeah, last week they were pretty average against the Dogs. So mm. Ninth defensively as well. Yep. Yeah. I'm leaning towards the over in this one. Uh, you got uh, last four meetings have gone well over uh, against these two. And you got obviously Sydney's firing offense. Giants, I think they've got so many good forwards that are going to fire off the finals. So I'm going over that 172 and a half. Dollar 87 with top sport. Nice one, stats boy. <laughs> Finally, I'll be there for this one. I'll be in the house. You'll be in there, the gather. yeah. With the squid. See, look, see, look at this. Real supporters go to finals of their teams interstate. I would if, uh, if they were in. I, I have actually been, but yeah. Fake fan. Not this year. See, Leo's going to be, fake fan? Leo's gonna be at the MCG. Real fan. I'll be, fake I'm fan. actually going to that game. Like, even Gerald, he's a Western Bulldogs fan. He's going to be there. I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Is is uh, Social Boy Leo going to put you like in one of those baby Bjorns and take you to it? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that, yeah, hilarious. We've got two small, dumb and dumb small, next to me. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I'll be taking the squid to this one. Brisbane, $1.28 favourites. Oh, God, why am I going? Your wife's like, see ya. Well, she's still stuck with squid number two. Yeah. So she's like, yeah, thanks a lot, idiot. I'm like, <laughs> you said it's okay. Carlton, at $3.55. The line is four goals. 23 and a half points. Or via top sport, of course. The over under 166.5. The way that Carlton played defense, Brisbane could hit that by themselves. I would be flying over this one. Yeah. Um, the at the Gabba, 7:40 p.m. on the Saturday night. Feels might, the right slot for the Gabba game. You cast your mind back to the start of this year. Carlton did win it game against the uh, Lions by one point, 46 points. Exactly. Deficit turned around. Uh, that was round zero. I was halfway to lawn in the car listening to that one on the radio. Going crazy. Just kicking the damn radio in as they're getting smashed. Got to the house, turned on the TV. It was like, we're back, boys. Let's go. Watch <laughs> Flag, it come flaggers. back. It was sick. Uh, I think that was the start of the Flaggers videos that I chucked up that night too. It's pretty good. Unfortunately, <laughs> since then, Carlton's uh, fortunes have taken a turn here and there. It's going to be a weird matchup. I'm not feeling wildly confident. I do like the over. Probably like the lines at the uh, line as well. But yeah, give us a historical matchup. Statement. Historical match. You can probably go through a little bit of this as well. You were at this one. Round 12, 2019. I'm taking you back to that one. Carlton 78, Brisbane 63. The Blues win by 15 there. Cripper, probably one of his best games of his whole career. 38 disposals, four goals. Jim would have been, you would have been chewing your lungs out uh, that game. Sealed the game with the last goal as well. He just, did everything for the Blues. He's like, as uh, you said about Buddy before, Alex, you just put him on, put uh, the Blues on I his mean, back. Cripps has done that for the last five years. But that game is just nuts. 38 as well as four goals. You had Lockie Neal was really good. Uh, Dan McStay, a couple of goals. Just pressure filled. I saw a couple of the highlights. Tackling galore. Just like, wasn't the most uh, free-flowing game as a lot of Carlton games are, but it was just an awesome, fun matchup. It was. I was there with my old man mm. and it was like one of the 
sort of first games that I'd been having just moved back at the end of 18. That's right. Yeah. So this was one of the very few, like, you know, had the membership. Uh, Perfect. Went to the game. It was awesome. Had a great time sitting on the first level at the old Marvel. Uh, had a great time. Yep. And you're just like watching Cripps going, oh, he's unreal. He did what a bit of happening? everything, yeah. So that was really fun. It was a surprise win because Brisbane <clears> were <throat> okay, I think, that year. Carlton were not that great and had not been that great. Sounds right. So that was really fun. And hopefully that happens again on <laughs> next uh, Saturday. I'm just saying. So Carlton are fourth in <clears throat> points per game this season. Fourth, which is pretty crazy considering the drop-off they had at the back end of the season. 14th on defense, which explains the drop off at the back end of the season. The Lions, fifth offensively, 92.6 points a game, which checks out, and second defensively, which is pretty massive, I yeah, thought. Big for the finals, yeah. Huge, huge, huge. So, Brisbane smash them. The. Ooh. It would not surprise me yeah. that we're flying all the way to Brisbane. We have, yeah. we have one, there's usually one blowout, and this is it. So, we will go into historical matchups again next week, but obviously, this was a prelim last year. Where amazing Carlton game last got out year. to like a six goal lead, yeah, even and, hold it in. Oh. Carlton sort of you know snuck her out, and it was all over. And you're like, this just sucks. But yeah. you could almost taste the grand final right there. <laughs> but Brisbane's last few games, right? So they gave up 67 points to Essendon. Yep, they lose that Collingwood game. Yep. in that stupid fashion of the G, uh, give up only 79 points. They lose to GWS 64 to 82. That's because they kicked like 927. <laughs> One million points. Yep. Uh, they smashed St Kilda four weeks ago and beat Gold Coast at People's First as well. I feel like they are. They get to use Carlton as a get right warm into the finals game, don't they? Yeah, this From, is... I think, yeah, if, the, if Brisbane wanted to face anyone, uh, yeah, they'd be like, all right, we can take, take the Literally team. Literally any, really team, out of form. any team in the out will like, I want Carlton in the first week. Yep, agreed. 100%. All banged up. They'll probably have like six ins from the game against St Kilda, but... I like everyone trying to make the correlation. Oh, the Western Bulldogs in 2016 had all these ins. Yes, okay, those things do happen. But you've got Carlton blokes who are coming off... Like, it's not like a one or a two-weeker. These are some long-term Long injuries, injuries yeah. and consistent niggles throughout the season from a squad which has shown they are more likely to re-injure themselves than they are to <laughs> yeah, live. Yeah, that's a very If point. Sam Doherty comes back in, it is one of the worst selections of the year. No offense to Doc, but... He could just He's ping cooked, something yeah. like that. Yep. I I think I made this point last week, right? Like it wasn't even – like Carlton didn't suck because of the injuries. They were sucking before the injuries. Yeah, 100%. And then 100%. the injuries compounded the sucking didn't help. at didn't the end help. of the season. So yep. I tend to think that – The flag is going to win it all. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Michael Voss is out there making citizens arrest. We're going to win the flag. I didn't realize that the other one got away and they're still looking for him. Oh, really? I'm like, what are you doing? Both. He's got two pythons. What <laughs> just is he come doing? On, just like one under each arm. Yeah. What are we doing here? Stats, boy. Give <laughs> us some stats, man. That's what I do, yes. Uh, Brisbane have won eight of the last nine home matches against Carlton. Obviously, uh, opening round, the Blues beat him at the start of the year. Brisbane 2-0 in the finals. Obviously, beat him last year, 2023 prelim. That was awesome game. Brisbane, they've won five of the last six meetings. And then I was going to lean towards some uh, bets, maybe the line or something like that. But I'm going to go the over 166.5, dollar eighty seven with top sport. That is a lock, I think. Brisbane at home, and then you've got two top five offenses. Blues defense, what was it, 14th? Yeah, Brisbane, they're going to score over 100 points oh. themselves, and I'd back uh, the Blues to cover like at least 70 points themselves. 14th, yeah, you're right. Yep. Uh, yeah, you think about the lineups that they'll have uh, for the – obviously for Brisbane, you'll have Joey Duckett's, Hipwood, Charlie Cameron – and we're doing Kyle Loman. We're doing like, all of them. Kyle, yeah, Kyle Loman, and you got what Logan, Logan the, Evans. No, no. Morris, Logan Morris, Morris. Logan yeah. Morris. Yeah, there's a Logan. Well, there's even Cam Rain has been kicking. Rain has been awesome, but yep. like that's the thing. There's McCluggy draws forward, kicks a goal. The way that Carlton's defense has been mm. looking lately, yeah, cool. and even then before the injuries, like to McGovern and Sard, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to stop this no. Lions yeah, cooked. offense. So, yeah, I love the over. Nice one. That is the first look at the first week of the finals. We will be breaking that all down again next week. However, as we get closer, we'll have a bunch of awesome player props. We'll have like the AFL Today Show multi for each game as well that we like the most that we've come together with our big brains. So we and do. just gotten sorted. That'll be uh, obviously, I don't know, what we all can vaguely agree on. Yeah, it's gonna take, that might take a few days. It's going to be good. But there you go. That'll be it for today from the AFL Today Show for Thursday. This one was, of course, brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. Thank you to the Ding Guy for today and jumping on. Alex. Cheers, Jim. And to the Stats Man. Thank you.
He's a man now, not a boy. <laughs> uh, remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff this week. What else did we do this week? We've got some other clips, don't we? Yeah, all Australian. That's How the did you gone. have Chad Warner in your team? I want to uh, fight you. He's a hater. That. That's exactly why I didn't put him in for that reaction right there. He's a hater. It means uh, you don't know ball. No, nah, he just wears TNs. I'm not a fan of him. It's all right. Remember, the rest of the shows, however, get around them. The AFLW Today Show, because we've just talked about the finals for next week, but, of course, AFLW does start this weekend. It's going to be gnarly. Cannot wait for that. Get around the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, and the newly back NFL Australia, and hold all tickets. All the good stuff right there. Subscribe, star, and like all of those shows across all your podcast apps, and smash them all on YouTube. Chuck in some comments. We'll be going through a bunch of the comments next week in the Midweek Madness Show. So throw up any questions you got yes. for the finals on there, and we will read them out on this show. Get around them. Like, I don't know. Those 10 teams in the bottom. Like, what is the most standout aspect to you of the 10 teams on the bottom of the ladder this year? Mine is still probably Frio and having to take dumps in the sink on the airplane. <laughs> Mine's That's a very good Collingwood point. spending the extra day in the Gold Coast mm. to go to Dreamworld and then coming back and getting beaten on the Friday night. <laughs> just That's Gold Coast not turning up away from home. That's, That's just my favourite thing of the year. I still love you, Ned Moyle and Jed Walters. All right, that's it. We'll catch you. This is the Thursday show. We'll be back with our award show Yes, on Sunday. That's going to be awesome. They're not your typical awards, by the way. These We've got the some way awesome better, categories. Way this is the AFL Today Show Awards. So I think Fox Footy doing their awards tonight. We're like, that's, that's cute. Yeah, <laughs> Fox Footy. Okay, check out the AFL Today Show Awards. They're going to blow your mind. Yeah. Enjoy that on Sunday. Well, until then, look after yourselves. And remember, finals. Footy is back. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.